Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession. Recently I've been testing the brand new Citroen Berlingo and I must admit whilst I've been editing this video I have hit a bit of a problem. The video was quite long, now I reckon to hazard a guess it was going to be around 30 minutes and I'm sure some of you will agree that is a little bit too long. I'll be honest there isn't really any footage I want to cut out, I've cut out as much as I um, would have wanted to so I thought I'd do things a little bit differently this time around and break their review up into two parts So this part you are watching right now. This is the interior review So I'll be talking about the practicality and the storage solutions and then in a few days You can expect to watch the driving review. So just a heads up. There won't be any driving in this video This is a static review of the interior and the practicality. I hope you do find it useful Anyway, let me stop talking and let me crack on with the video MPVs. In the 90s and the early noughties, these were a popular mode of transport for family life as they offered space, practicality and depending on the model, seven seats. However, ever since the Nissan Qashqai hit the market, buyers have been flocking towards SUVs and not MPVs. So that begs the question, are cars like the new Citroen Berlingo a bit of a motoring has-been? Hmm. Now you may be asking, well Aaron, why would I want a big boxy MPV in 2019. Well, as you will soon see, this has loads of space and it even has sliding rear doors. Look at that, can your SUV do that? No, I didn't think so. Yeah, sliding rear doors. Now, joking aside, these are more practical in a tighter space, so this should be pretty good for family life. The other reason why a Berlinga is very good compared to an SUV is the massive boot. Not only can you fit one of me, and I'm six foot two in case you are wondering, but you also get a capacity of 775 litres, and that's with the rear seats up. Now, to compare it to the Peugeot Rifter and the Vauxhall Combo Life, both of which are made by the PSA Group as well, much like this car, the Rifter has got the same, so 775 litres, but the Combo Life has to make do with 597 litres. Now, all three of those cars are available as a seven-seater, so this car can be had in XL version, which gives you seven seats, and the car is also a little bit longer. This is 4.4 meters in length, and the XL is 4.75 meters in length. But to go back to this car, if you want even more space, you can, of course, fold down the rear seats. Now, I've got the range-topping flare model, meaning I've got the individual rear seats with the magic seat system, so folding them down is as easy as one, two, Three. Now, once you've done that, you get a simply show-stopping 3,500 litres, which to compare to the Rifter, the Rifter gets 3,000 litres and the Combo Life only has 2,126 litres. Now, if you want to compare it to the Seat Taraco I had last week, when the Taraco was in two-seat configuration, it had about half the capacity of this does when you have it in two-seat configuration. So, this is pretty much a mobile self-storage, it's fantastic, but it doesn't stop there. The opening for the boot is very wide, it's very practical, it's very square, so loading things in should be pretty easy. The load dip is low and there's no nasty step into the boot, so again, loading bigger, heavy items or dogs should be pretty easy. You also get a little bin in here, a 12 volt socket. This parcel shelf can be moved down here for better versatility, and, and you even get this compartment up here, which opens like so. In here you get an extra 60 litres worth of space and it can hold up to 10 kilograms. You can also access this compartment from the rear seats. Now, in case you are wondering about a spare wheel, you do get one but it's tucked underneath the car down here. Now, lastly, the tailgate is quite big but thankfully it's not quite as heavy as it looks and you even get a little strap to help pull it down. Ouch, my knees. So let's move on to the rear. Now, as always, the driver's seat has been set for me. As I mentioned earlier, I'm six foot two, so I am, of course, a taller chap. Let's be stepping like so, which is very easy because of the sliding rear door. And let me make myself comfortable. Ah, yes. Right. So the space left over is pretty decent. Okay, I haven't got loads of knee room, but I've got enough for my height. And leg room is also pretty agreeable as well. But what about headroom? This car does have a panoramic roof and quite often they can cut into headroom. So let's give it a go. Headroom, 
is very decent, so I've got no complaints there. Now, if you go for the rain-stopping flare model, you do get fold-out tables in the back of the front seats, much like the Seat Tobacco I had last week. But the tables in the Bilingo don't lock into place, so if you happen to have your lunch here and a drink and the driver hits a pothole or you just happen to hit the table, you could end up with your lunch and your drink in your lap. So when you get to your destination, it looks like you've soiled yourself. So yeah, I would like the table to lock into place, but it does feel quite durable and quite robust. So even the most heavy handed of child shouldn't be able to rip it off in anger when they are having a tantrum. Now, one thing I will say about the table is you do get a cup holder, which is great, but it is a bit of an odd size. It's not overly flexible. So this brings me on to a game I'd like to play called What Can You Fit Into The Cup Holder? Yes, I know, it is a very original title. It took me hours to come up with. So the idea, as you can imagine, is very simple. I will see what I can fit into the cup holder and, well, let's see how we get on. So I've got a selection of drinks. I have ram raided a local petrol garage. So I have a bottle of fruity drink, a can of fizzy pop, a bottle of water, a can of energy drink, and I also have my trusty sports bottle. So, right, you can play along at home. So which one do you think will be able to fit in? So let's start off with the, uh, the fruity drink. So here goes nothing. Oh dear, that's been kidnapped by gravity. Not a good start. Okie dokie, let's try the um, can of fizzy pop. Oh, it's, it's too big. Okay. Um, okay, scratch that. Um, oh, the energy drink. Oh, that's also been claimed by gravity. Um, oh, my sports bottle, it's quite a little bit tapered, so that might fit. Oh, it's close, but not quite there. So that means the bottle of water is my only hope. I feel like Princess Leia in Star Wars. Bottle of water, you are my only hope. Okay, it doesn't quite have this, the same ring as Obi-Wan, but you get my point. So, it all rides on this. Yes, we have a winner. So, if you voted for the Bulbic bottle of water, well done, give yourself a pat on the back. Oh, I can't, it won't come out. Um, whoever, whoever has this car next, you get a free bottle of water. You can thank me later. Just pop that down like that. <laughs> Let me remove that. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on to the rest of the practicality, shall we? Now, can you fit three adults in the back? I think you can, because I've got the individual rear seats, they all have the same width. Therefore, I don't think you'd have too many complaints if you had if you were to have three adults back here. But if you have three children, of course, that'd be fine. And each individual seat has got its own isofix point. Very practical indeed. Now, speaking of other bits of practicality, as well as the tables, you do get a little pouch at the bottom of the seat, so I can fit in a few snacks, like so. I also have a door bin, which isn't massive, but I can fit my bottle of fruity drink in there. And I can just about squeeze in this packet of crisps. So again, that's pretty handy, but that's not all because I also have storage underneath my feet. So if I just get my plates of meat out of the way, because they are quite large. Right, and lift up the mat you'll see you've got a little hideaway just here, which is very handy. So put my snacks in there, bottle of water, my crisps, and it just hides away like so, and you can cover it with the mat. Now, I do have one more thing to say about the rear. Now, I, I covered the seats earlier. Now, in case you are wondering, they don't slide forwards or backwards, neither do they recline, which may disappoint some, but I do feel the Magic Seat system does make up for it. There is one bit of practicality I want to mention whilst I'm here, although it is optional. It's called the Modutop. Modutop? What is that, I hear you ask? Well, it is a £750 option, and not only does it give you this large glass roof, 
but it gives you this rather ingenious storage rack as well, which runs down the middle of the car. It's translucent and it gives you a nice bit of background lighting, but more importantly, this alone adds 92 litres worth of interior space. Oh, handy. Incoming! Time to move on to the front, which like the rest of the car, is a practical and spacious place to be. Let me step in like so, which is very easy to do. And let me talk through the cubby holes because they seem pretty infinite in here. So the door bins are of a decent size. In fact, you get two, you get a big door bin and a kind of tiny door bin, which I must admit, you can't really fit too much into. But into the big door bin, you can fit a 1.5 litre bottle of water with a little bit of encouragement. There we go. You don't get any cup holders in the middle, but you do get one either side. They are a little bit too small for a 750 milliliter bottle of drink. So, oh, that's actually quite close, closer than I was expecting. But you can fit in a 500 milliliter bottle of drink with ease. And what about my can actually? Can I fit a can in? Yes, I can, I can can. Too many cans. Anyway, I digress. So yes, the door bins are of a good size. You've got the cup holders. I, I also have a compartment in front of me. So let me grab my packet of crisps, sling them in there. That is very handy. You get two cubbies in the middle, one down here and one up here. So I've got my wallet. I can pop it in here or I can pop it in there like so. Very handy. A little slot down here where, again, I can probably fit my wallet. You can probably pop a bit of loose change in there if you wanted to as well. I've also got a drawer underneath my driver's seat. So again, I can fit some items in, in there. That's actually quite big. I can fit quite a lot in there. God, when will it stop? Blimey. Okay, that fitted quite a lot in. So let me decanter all of that. Decanter, that's a bit of a posh word. And I get not one, two glove boxes. So I've got a top mounted glove box. In case you are wondering, the front passenger airbag is actually mounted up, up here somewhere in the roof. So the, the top glove box offers a good amount of space. I can fit my lunch in there like so, get my crisps, and I can fit my fruity drink and there's space left over. Plus, when you have the air conditioning on, when you have it set to a low level, your items will remain nice and cool. Very, very good indeed. In here, you also have an auxiliary port and a USB port. There's also a USB port in the middle as well. Going back to the storage, actually there's, there's a 12 volt socket down here before I forget. Going back to the storage, you've got a little cubby here where you can keep a few smaller items. But to go back to the second glove box, it isn't as big and it hasn't got a cover, but even so, it still fits in a decent amount of space. I've got my my lunch. Can I fit the drink in? Oh, yes I can, just fantastic. You've also got cubby holes up here, so I can fit my bottle of water up here. Obviously, probably not a good idea to put water up here because it might roll out onto your head whilst you're driving, not very clever, but you've got a good amount of storage up here. Overall, the inside is a very practical place to be. Now, what is it like to get a good, comfortable driving position? Well, that is quite easy. The steering wheel adjusts for rake and reach like so, pretty standard stuff. And my driver's seat also has a good level of adjustment. However, if you go for the base model, the driver's seat is not height or tilt adjustable. So if you are the kind of person that finds it difficult to get a comfortable driving position, or perhaps you're a little bit fussy, then you may want to avoid the uh, fuel specifications, the base model, because you may find it a little bit tricky. But in this car, it's absolutely fine, and you can get your own armrest. Luxury. So there we have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video, or I hope you found it useful. If so, be sure to like, subscribe, and to ring my bell so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.